not only are we the world and the children of this world, we're also the creation that surrounds it and that makes it what it is. The big dream that everything's made out of, that's what we happen to be, we little tiny bits of humanity, I tell you. You tune in here, you find out, man. Little by little, it just starts to catch on. Cause we present our tunas here live and spontaneous. We let the members of our own green room determine who gets to go next, you know. Uh, in other words, so you get a top quality in the groove, in the flow, kind of coyote medicine show, don't you know. Yeah, it's a little tricky, especially when you're personality or carefully constructed personality is falling apart but you know that's what you get for carefully constructing things eh? you can't construct in such a way it can't be brought down in a day man no way I tell you what in a minute really the way things are in this reality well watch as all of our illusions shatter here you think it's just your personality that's taking a trip hey baby time to get hit this whole world's coming down cause the big heart of the universe is coming around. You betcha Big Mama is here. Watch out, dear. You're going to get it clear on the Hazy Radio Network today. So says Grandpa Coyote and my little Oki Wan Kenobi Coyote. He is such a rousy rock little guy. Oh, babies, and so's our sweet Mary Jane, who, who inspires that dog-like love and everything, man. Are you like that, too? You just can't get enough love wherever you go? Well, that's because you're empty, baby. That's that constructed emptiness personality you had to put over the top of all that emptiness, okay? Even little dogs turn away, don't they? See? That's what you get to be in what you could have been instead of what you are, okay? But see, today's the day. Down it comes. I know it's only a trip in Tuesday, and I've been saying Wowser Wednesday. Let me look at my little calendaric expression here. But it's a Wowser Wednesday on a trip in Tuesday, okay? And tomorrow it's a trip in Tuesday on a Wowser Wednesday. Just in honor of Cosmic Tuesdays, who by misfortune was not on last night. I missed his show. I like that guy, man, a lot. He always gets these astrologers and these ghost chasers and stuff on. And he always did a good job of exhausting their enterprise and getting the truth out of him one way or another. Maybe we should put this guy busy on some of the more recent tragedies in this reality. Maybe he could get to before they're all dead or something. I don't know, darling. But he sure does a quality show. Anthony Pico, don't you know, here on the Hazy Radio Network. Cosmic Tuesdays, Monday evenings, man. Don't miss it, okay? Same with, ooh, what's we got going on over there? Well, uh, Oh, on Thursdays, man. Yeah, Hair Razor Radio. You betcha, man. Scott Hair is the hair of them all, man. He'll raise the hackles on your backles these days. He's looking into 911 and all kinds of fun, and he's undoing every conspiracy there ever could be. A little bit here, a little bit there. You just have to tune in on Thursday nights to catch it, okay? As the hazy radio sort of way. Well, good morning to you, baby. Now you got a little wake-up call going on y'all. Yeah. Just hang on. I'll help you through, baby. I just not gonna leave you feeling blue and all falling apart, too. We'll put you back together again here as we go along, okay? It's about time, wouldn't you say? On a trippin' Tuesday and a wilds or Wednesday. On a trippin' Tuesday, okay? Out of nothing. How about that, man? You just tuned into a little radio show here on the Hazy Radio Network. One that just happens to be called Spring Creek. And babies, you got on the flow. You got in the flow. You're starting to feel that mmm dragging you along with it, man. Wow, how about that? You've been resisting, haven't you, man? Hanging on to the bottom and clinging to the sides and saying, no, 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 I don't want to go. Thinking it's all going away, yet it's all coming your way if you just let go and go with the flow. Don't you know? I mean, it's pretty simple. You just be what's real. What you feel, that's the deal, man. And I'm not talking about them superficial little teenage feelings you have when you're, quote, quote, falling in love. Even if you're 45 or 95, I mean, you know, that's still a lot of silliness, you know, and a lot of misdirection. But, you know, a good manifestation of love in its own right, because it's well intended on all sides. Nobody really wants to take advantage of anyone. 
when it comes right down to it, we're all basic, decent human beings. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing like a traveling life to convince you of that, you know. Especially when you're a kid and you don't know much and you're just out there exploring the world. You know the world you come from and you know it's completely unacceptable. That Mormon state of Utah, that was just crazier than hell. So, man, this old man, when I was a little kid, I'd be out there on the road, man, doing it one way or another. I'd, you know, surreptitiously buy me a car and disappear or whatever, you know. I had a lot of little slightly criminal things going on there, you know. But the funny thing was, you know, my desperation to get away and to have a free life, you know, was like, it, 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 it touched people. And where other people would get hit real severely for what they did, I got hit kind of softly for what I did. I mean, I was on probation forever when I was a kid, when I was home in Utah. And I spent a good share of my time in Colorado from about the age of 12, 13 on through, even though, you know, I'd get busted every now and then, because back then they would uh, send the old runaways home, babies, you know, make sure you were held until the police come and got you from your home state. Crazy stuff, I'll tell you, man. Big federal charges for doing nothing more than being a kid, you know, and trying to get away and have a good time with life, man, and finding out there really are decent folks out here and all kinds of them. And even some of the biggest yahoo ahoos that you ever seen, old McDonald with his ranch out here in Colorado catches you breaking into the chicken coop trying to steal a chicken or two because you're hungry as hell. Well, guess what? Yeah, he's going to put you to work, make you pay for whatever damage you did. Oh, well, look at that. You wound up working all day, so he's going to pay for what you did. You know, take off the damages, of course, but you get the rest, and you get on down the road, and everybody's happy. You know, some of the honoriest people can be so decent when they want to be. It's all about the attitude you carry. If you let that desperation overwhelm you and think you're entitled to that chicken, well... Son of a gun, it changes things, don't you? And old MacDonald might just turn you over to the police. Then you'll have a real issue, won't you? See? Hey, I remember one time I met a guy, as friendly as could be, and he turned out to be the guy I just wanted to see because he was the, in charge of the apple-picking orchards there in Grand Valley, Colorado. I'm not going to mention names, but that was an awesome place, man, for a 13, 14-year-old to be hanging out. you got to understand, I was a little mature for my age, so people thought I was older than what I was, you know, so I could get away with it. But anyway, long story short, next thing you know, I wind up picking apples for two weeks. One of the funnest times of my life. They give me a little cabin behind their house to stay in. Their daughters are real friendly. And we hang out at that. When we're not picking apples, we hang out at the corner drugstore, drink nickel coffee, and play nickel, uh, what do you call them things? A pinball machine. My buddy was a wizard when it came to that. He could win any of them, man. It was beautiful. But the people you encountered all along were just as sweet and as decent. And even when it dawned on him that, God, this kid's probably a runaway. Well, even then, they would sit, let you have it your way, you know, and send you on peacefully. Because they didn't want to harbor runaways, but they'd send you on peacefully and not say anything to anyone. And, you know, your journey's just begun. And babies, even when you did get busted, you know, now there's places in Colorado where it's real unpleasant, and I could tell you where those are and where the other places are. No, but I'm telling you, and this is like, you know, 60 years ago now. <laughs> it's been a day or two, you see. So these places have changed a lot. But gosh, even when I did get busted, me and my buddy there in, in Aspen, Colorado, man, um, and held there for two or three weeks, in the basement jail in the courthouse, where else are you going to put these kids, you know? I mean, so we dealt with the other prisoners, too. And there was only a few. I mean, yeah, there wasn't much going on in Aspen back in those days. It's a pretty quiet little town. And the people, the sheriff and his wife, who uh, cooked our meals for us there in the jail, gee whiz, they took such great kindness to us and, and would let their little dog come down and play with us sometimes, things like that, let their kids come down and talk to us, stuff like that. They really wanted us to be a part of their family. They really did, and I sure would have liked to. That would have been the ideal, you know, when I was a little kid. Got me out of that, you know, raucous BS of Utah and got me into a stable position as the sheriff's adopted kid. Oh, hell, well, how sweet would that be, man? And they really did make inquiries 
inquiries, but of course, with my big old family and all their preeminence, there was no way they're going to give up one of their own, you know, you bring that child back to us and you do it post tense, you know, et cetera, you know what I mean? But oh well, it, it all worked out, and, and, and I tell you what, I did learn that there was a world beyond the, the confines of the mountains of the Wasatch there in Utah that Utah was only a beginning point for me. And, you know, I could find the same decency there when uh, when I bothered with it. But I was so obsessed in my rebellion as a child, as a young man, that, well, you know, uh, I just took decency for granted when I saw it there. Anywhere else it was special, but at home it's like, well, about time, huh? <laughs> Way it goes, baby. But this is how we get all rounded out. This is how we start to realize the truth of humanity, that we are at heart, at the basis of everything, we're really decent people, and we want to be decent to everybody else. We just get stuck in conditions and circumstances that make us otherwise, you see. But if you're a traveler and you got the charm, baby, you, you can get to the truth with anyone. And I've always had that gift, and I've always employed it, kind of subconsciously, because I don't think about it. But people will open up and tell me and show me, etc., you know. And baby, that's what it's all about. It's just carrying that good attitude with you, no matter what you're going through, you know. Uh, recent times, I've been getting attacked with all kinds of physicality, uh, uh, what would you call it, the circumstances that are just beyond belief, you know. It's like I'm having to work out every little thing that everybody on this earth done all at one time inside of my physical presence by dealing with it as physical pain, something like that. Whoo, babies, it's been a long one. Well, we got a whole lot of people out there sending good gifted energy this way to this old man, so I'm able to prop myself up and make it through another day, man, and then another one, and another one, and it's getting better, and it's getting better, and then we'll do nothing but get stronger, because we're starting to realize what we knew all along, but what our life has told us, whether we're 16 or 1600, that people are basically decent, and that you can rely on that basic human decency when the chips are down. So just keep that in your remembrance when they're trying to freak you out with all kinds of new uh, tragedies of one sort or another. Just remember that this is bringing humanity closer, not further from itself. And out of these tragedies come some of our greatest triumphs because we learn how to change things. We learn how to rearrange things without having to go, you know, socially protest in any form or fashion. We learn that the dream flows through us. It's all made of love. That's why humans are decent to one another. When it comes right down to cases, when it can be, blah, blah, blah. All these excuses we have, but it's just training and programming that we're here to get over. And we recognize that flow. We recognize that glow in everyone. Even Dick Cheney's got it. Everybody's got it. I mean... And all we have to do, if we want to do anything with our life, is come conscious of that. Start going with that flow. That's all, don't you know? Now, some people have, you know, huge guardians and protections built against such things in their heart area. You know? But, guess what? The most craftily and cleverly constructed of those guardians over your sweet little heart is an illusion created primarily for yourself so you'd feel a little safety and security here and it made you into a devious human being one that could not be relied on to do what they say or say what they do because you felt like you had to protect yourself and you took measures to do so sometimes they may have bordered even on criminal activity i hope not for your sake but you know sure been a lot of my buddies wind up in the prison you know i don't like to see that stuff but at the same time, some people have got to learn the hard way, and that's the hardest way I could think of. You know, I can't think of a much worse life than that, can you? I mean, that's just a torture that never ends. Living in a prison, a little one-room thing, and being bossed around by people that are a lot sicker than you are, and being shown the heresy and the hypocrisy in society so that you can even get angrier and just want to blow it all up. You make a really good uh, client for that police state, don't you? See, you got you, you to gotta redirect yourself. You know, you just have to get out of that flow. But, you know, sometimes angels 
go into dungeons in order to help other angels recover from that dungeon. To hold them together until they can get out of there. I've seen that kind of thing happen. I've seen these big old genie looking guys go down for cocaine or something like that, you know. Ten years, man. But I see them as they're going into that situation and I say to them, buddy, do you realize what you're doing here? You're going to hold it together for about 10,000 prisoners, man. You got some influence. And I'm just letting you know what's going to happen for you so you're ready for it, okay? And he says, right on, man. And here's poor fella going down 10 years, won't see a woman in all that time. And if he does, he won't be able to touch her, you know, et cetera, and so on, man. Talk about a warped, hellish, and sick little life. That's about as bad as it gets. But there are princes and princesses, the goddesses amongst us, that will go to the supreme sacrifice in aid and assistance to their fellow beings. That's that decency thing I'm talking about. So you really have to learn to see beyond the levels of this life. And pre people that are prisoners and non-prisoners and so on and so forth. Because obviously these are illusionary tactics. Obviously because the rules don't apply to the, to the guards, but it sure does to the prisoners. You see what I mean? <laughs> Yet... In that dungeon, that hell, we start to recognize we're all in it together. The guards are no freer than the prisoners are either. You know that? It's true, man. And we could turn everybody into a decent human being in a heartbeat if we cared to. And there would be no need for a police state ever. Because we're not criminals. Human beings are essentially, even the most foul of us, are essentially a decent soul. We get corrupted along the way. We get tricked and trained in strange ways, especially if we get involved with the criminal justice system. I could see that when I was a kid, how they were designing a program to just graduate you right into prison when you turned of age, you know. And I'm like, no, thank you very much. I realized that some of my criminal activity had to be curtailed, that rebellion could be a little more uh, exemplary, a little more uh, soft and sweet in its application. I started to learn my own coyote medicine, that that I was born with, that that's always tricked me into resolution one way or the other. I'm never the kind that can just sit in the middle of the track and wait for the train. It don't happen. I get resolution, I'm on my way, you see. And I don't get, uh, I get pushed around a lot in this life. I go to a lot of extremes, you know. This is like what I've been doing physically here lately, man. I mean, this is just stupid. It just don't happen. All of a sudden, you're just bam, in pain all over the place from nowhere. That's not arthritis. That's not, you know, old age. That's your life catching up to you. That's when you got to deal with the most, most essential of it. Get it real, get it right, get it rocking, or let it kill you, as the case may be, see? Well, i got, got to let you know I'm made out of the same stuff you are here in this 3D, and guess what? We're going to pull it through, and we're going to pull it on through, and we ain't stopping for nobody or nothing, man. This flight has taken off. And we are not going to change course of direction until we get to the place we're already there at. Okay? Yeah, Spring Break. Rockin' Little Radio Show. You betcha. Ooh, the original moment. Coming forward from the beginning, man. You see, and that beginning is right there in the recognition of the basic decency in the human heart and every person that possesses of that human heart, which is possessed by that human heart, which is the only kind of possession you'll ever inhabit again. You've gone through your illusions, you've paid your dues, you've got your pains. Now, get in this flow. Come skinny dip with us this summer, don't you know? We're having a lot of fun here, man. It's like, you know, independent stuff. This is when you recognize you're made out of the same stuff everyone else is. And everyone else is too. And there's basic decency everywhere. Time to wake up, children. Where's my roosters? Get those roosters out here. They got that. It's their turn, man. And they just love to crow so loud. It's time to wake up, kiddos. This is your morning wake up call here on the Hazy Radio Network. 
your buddy Grandpa Coyote and his little buddy and compadre, little Okiwan Kenobi, he directs the angels, wouldn't you say? I mean, come on, guys. This guy's powerful. How about you? You got some power left in you? Well, I hope your battery's not run down, but we'll do our best to give you a little recharge today, okay? And help you along the way. In that multi-dimensional presence of rock and roll is the Coyote Medicine Show called Spring Creek, don't you know? Only on the Everclear and Sweethearted 2 Hazy Radio Network, man. We're coming there for you. In fact, we're coming after you now. That's all there is to it. Enough is enough. And you've been sitting on your duff for too long, so watch out, baby. The Angels are coming your way. As one indeed, babies. Come with me now as we take a little journey back to a little space beyond time. A place where we were aboard our little spaceship love, which wasn't so little after all now, was it? And there's nothing but love and the desire for ever-expansive creative growth. And we're watching right before our very eyes as this universe begins to form its big surprise. Here's Mama Love coming forward in motion in a unique little planet we're going to call Mother Earth. And we're going to give ourselves a place of birth, a place of being there, B-E-R-T-H. The place where we hang out safely, you know, our home harbor, you know, from which we can expand into all of this creation, man. It was just too much for us to resist the baby children of the universe, freshly created inside of our little crate of a spaceship. Yet it was so gracious there and so spacious and everything you ever wanted or needed was right there. You didn't have to think about a thing. It was just there. And we just watched in amazement as creation continued creating around us, preparing a universe for us to play in. Not realizing that, yeah, it had a, a superficial edge to it. That we were really going to step out of our reality for a while and go into a place that was cold and dark and deadly. And there was living and dying and dying and living and lots of fear and no security there, man. None at all, unless you could develop it. And if you did, usually you were just kidding yourself, trying to stay ahead of the pack a wee bit. Doesn't always work, does it? No, you know. We wind up finding this old friend called alcohol, you know. And, uh, oh, next thing you know, you're doing the stupidest thing. And you didn't even know you were doing it. You were completely out of control. Well, baby, we not do. We don't need control. We just need to be in the flow, don't you know. It carries the song almost as magically as alcohol does in the other way. Opens you up to all those unkind spirits, wouldn't you say? An unkind experience is craziness, baby. Yet, when we're here to play, when we're coming out, instead of going in, when we're going back and remembering, when it just begins, and then you see the earth form before you, and all the trees, birds and bees, animals and critters coming into being, and you're going, wow, mama, you are so hot. And then you go there, and you take that first step on what we call solid ground. It's, we never knew anything like that before. Nothing solid ever existed. We're all in a fluid flux flow. And we take our formations within that, don't you know? That's all a person is, is a formation inside of a much larger flow which forms itself as a grand stream of life. The river of love, the river of life, you know? And we're right at the headwaters, by the way. You know, Spring Creek is the beginning where that stream of life began to flow, see? So these are original moments that all of us remember, don't you know? And we step back in time, way beyond time, and there's Mother Earth freshly created, and there's us, finally ready. What we think is to take our first step in that reality. A little serpent buddy comes along and scorts us down, and we put our feet down on the ground. The kind of red, sandy earth beautiful stuff. We've never seen such spectacular scenes before. And everything's tall and gigantic then. It wasn't wimpy like it is now. Every expression was huge and every life was large and large to be living in too. Very large. It was a whole new adventure. A whole new beginning. Well, this is that same moment because time does not exist. 
And we're still just taking that first step forward, baby. And as we put our foot down, we see from the ground an expansion of the whole universe and our expansion in it. And we see why we've come to learn to live in the 3D, the third density. So we could grow, baby. See, opposites sometimes bring forward opposition. Polarities we'd never expressed before. We didn't know what they were. Innocence prevails here because of all of that and all the activity in it. you got to remember, it's just a game, baby. And you can say just a game, but it is a game. And we're players in it, but guess what? We've already reached the highest levels. There is no more game to play. Time to go back to being in reality. Put that first step down and watch it as it does expound into the reality around it. One step. And there's a whole universe created. Another step. And there's your person in that universe. Another step. And there's all your compadres joining you. Another step. And the whole of history is accomplished. And we're reunionated with the family we thought we'd lost so long ago. We thought they pulled away from us when we stepped into this tragic realm. Fearing that it was too much for us. Okay? But that's not the truth. Truth is, we're always there, we're always here. We're wherever we want to be. We don't have to be anywhere we don't want to be either. you got to keep that in mind as you go through this life. That's the rock and roll edge to it, man. That's where reality begins. When you understand, you volunteered, you wanted to be here. You wanted to be in this moment right now. So you could get it clear. And another one tomorrow and another one the next day and another one a day after that. Another one a day after that. These moments stack up to that one singular moment where expansion begins. The one step we take forward first on our sacred mother love and earth. This was her way of devising herself back into all of creation. Beautiful, I'd say, in helping the children along the way. Geez, we have learned so much, have we not? Well, then again, I'm not so sure. <laughs> the Spring Quick Flow, Spring Quick Flow on the Hazy Radio Network, baby. Getting you again, baby, in that coyote sort of way. Right by the heart, wouldn't you say? See? You do have a heart, and it can come out and play. Let's show it today, okay? I think it's about time, don't you? 